वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वेलकम बैक अगेन इन द सोशल साइंस क्लास एंड आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन एट योर प्लेसेस वी हैव डन ट्वेल्व चैप्टर्स ऑफ इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व चैप्टर ऑफ हिस्ट्री इन द प्रीवियस टर्म नाउ इन दिस टर्म वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर ऑफ योर हिस्ट्री बुक चैप्टर नंबर थर्टीन एंड द चैप्टर नेम इज इंडिया आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिपेंडेंस सी इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल रीड अबाउट समथिंग दैट मैनी चैलेंजेस विच इंडियंस हैव हैड फेस्ड एट दैट टाइम लाइक रिहेबिलेशन इकोनॉमिक डिफिकल्टीज शॉर्टेज ऑफ फूड and framing of constitution these type of things we will read in this chapter so let us start see after india became independent she faced many challenges the british had left behind an india that had been pushed back to the medieval ages see at that time beta britishians have had done so many bad things with the indians so that we can say that ki india bahut back stage pe chala gaya tha and many issues needed an immediate solution like the four main issues were there first one is the first challenge was the integration of the princely states into india see at that time princely states were there so that use join karna use ikattha karna integrate karna is necessary so that the first challenge was the integration of the princely states into india and the second was the rehabilitation of the refugees refugees means that person who moved from the pakistan so unko rehabilitate karna hi uh, main thing tha third was to solve the economic problems and ensure development of also and the fourth was to draft a constitution to chart the future course of the india so see the first problem first challenge was there is the integration of the princely states see at the time of transfer of power there were more than 550 princely states in india so each of these was ruled by a maharaja or a nawab that means different different rulers the at that time alag alag princely states ke and they had to be persuaded to join india so displaying diplomacy and tact sardar vallabhbhai patel persuaded most of them to join india so sardar vallabhbhai patel ne bahut ek important role play kiya tha at that time लाइक विद द डिप्लोमेसी अलग अलग टेक्स्ट को यूज़ करके उन्होंने उन प्रिंसली स्टेट्स को ज्वाइन किया इंडिया में एंड द रूलर्स ऑफ कश्मीर जूनागढ़ एंड हैदराबाद रिमेन अनडिसाइडेड फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम इन थ्री प्लेसेस को अनडिसाइडेड छोड़ा गया था सो लेटर ऑल थ्री एग्रीड टू ज्वाइन द इंडिया ऑल्सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट चैलेंज वॉज रिहेबिलेशन ऑफ द रिफ्यूजिज सी बेटा आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस करोर्स ऑफ पीपल माइग्रेटेड टू इंडिया फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान ओके एंड एट दैट टाइम दे वर होमलेस एंड जॉबलेस ऑल्सो सो टू रिहेबिलिएट दैम वॉज अ बिग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी बिफोर द न्यू गवर्नमेंट क्योंकि कोई भी नई गवर्नमेंट बनेगी तो उसके इन फ्रंट एक बहुत बड़ी बिग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी थी दैट दीज होमलेस पर्सन और जॉबलेस पर्सन को रिहेबिलिएट करना now third is solving the economic difficulties see at that time after partition india faced many economic difficulties most of the rice and wheat producing areas went to pakistan at present wo places pakistan mein merge ho gaye the so it led to food shortages in the india and many indian industries also faced a shortage of raw materials as jute and cotton growing areas were also now in pakistan so that bahut sari industries ko bhi raw material available nahi ho raha tha unki shortage ki wajah se unki industries band ho rahi thi and irrigation facilities are were also non almost non existent and the government had to find a solution to all these problems now next is framing a constitution ye bhi ek bahut bada challenge tha see india needed a constitution constitution for itself 
and the constitution assembly listen carefully this is very important topic the constitution assembly decided to prepare a constitution okay and the chairman of the drafting committee was dr b r ambedkar and he played a very important role in framing the constitution constitution so that's why dr b r ambedkar is known as the father of the indian constitution you can underline these line in your book also and one main thing is that the committee completed jo ye committee banayi gayi thi drafting committee for the constitution completed its work on 26 november 1949 but the constitution was applicable was adopted on 26 january 1950 so since then this day is celebrated every year as our republic day so here are some features of the constitution of india are given below which you have read uh, from the sixth class also see first one is equality before the law very easy and simple that the constitution declared that all indians irrespective of their caste religion and gender are equal before the law of the country and people of all castes communities regions and religions would enjoy the same rights that means hamare constitution mein clear kiya gaya tha ki all indians kisi bhi caste religion aur gender ka jo person hai they all are equal before the law in the country and no person would face any kind of discrimination ye first important part hai hamare constitution ka second is special privileges for the disadvantaged indians see disadvantaged indians means those persons who are uh, considered as untouchables or uh, very lower caste you can say okay so the framers of the constitution believed that for centuries some sections of society had been deprived and discriminated against हमारी बहुत सेंचुरी से ये देखा जा रहा था कि हमारी कुछ सेक्शंस हैं सोसाइटी के दे हैड बिन डिफ्राइब्ड एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेटेड अगेंस्ट सो दे दे फोर मेड प्रोविजन्स फॉर ग्रांटिंग रिजर्वेशन ऑफ सीट्स सो ऐसे पर्सनस के लिए कुछ प्रोविजन्स बनाए गए रिजर्वेशन दी गई ऑफ सीट्स इन द लेजिस्लेचर एंड इन द गवर्नमेंट जॉब्स ऑल्सो फॉर देयर सेक्शंस सो दिस दे बिलीव्ड वुड हेल्प पीपल बिलोंगिंग टू दीज सेक्शंस to uplift their social and economic status iski wajah se unka social and economic status high jayega so next is universal adult franchise see the constitution granted all indian citizens above the age of 21 at that time the age of voting is 21 and the right to vote in the elections and choose their leaders so this was the true essence of the democracy now what is the present voting age present voting age is 18 years and above and the last is three lists kuch three lists mentioned thi see the constitution divided powers between the central government and state governments it made three lists first is union list second is state list and third is concurrent list in this in this subject in the union list were to be looked after solely by the central government okay union list is by the central government and the state list were to be looked after solely by the state governments and the subjects in the concurrent list were to be joint responsibility of both the central and the state governments okay so this much is for today the next part we will do in the next video thank you have a nice day